Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Hello, my friend. Welcome to the broadcast, and thank you for making the broadcast part of your day. Thank you for wanting to grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. All believers in Christ ought to have that as their goal, to become more like the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, to do that, let's get into God's Word today. My Bible is sitting open to the book of Hebrews chapter 2. If you can, reach over, pick up your own copy of God's Word and join me there. Hebrews chapter 2, I'll be reading the opening four verses. Also, in a moment, I want to encourage you to get from us a sample packet, which contains one each of all of our English gospel tracks. I'm going to highlight one of those tracks here in a second. You need to know that for 76 plus years now, God has enabled Bible Track Echoes and its parent company, Bible Tracks Incorporated, to take the gospel virtually all over the world in printed form. That's a gospel track. And we would love to tell you more about what God is doing Our website has a great deal of information. If helping to get the gospel around the world is something that really kind of strikes in your soul as something you would like to know more about and maybe participate in, go to our website. You can even help us to take gospel tracts there and sharing in the responsibilities. Uh, We have no undergirding uh, large corporation. We are a faith ministry. We just want to do the work of the gospel around the world. Well, let me begin the broadcast this way. I think you realize that in every part of our life, you and I are consistently having to ask ourselves this question, where am I getting my information from? Or what is my source behind why I hold the position on some issue that I do? Now, no matter whether we're talking about uh, who's the greatest basketball player of all time or what restaurant serves the best French fries or what is the right definition for marriage, whatever the situation, whatever the topic, all of these require that we come to grips with who we are going to believe and get our source of truth from. Hebrews chapters 1 and 2 are all about the Lord Jesus Christ being a superior person to angels, as great as angels are. Jesus is the God-man. He's the eternal creator, God who came to earth in the form of human flesh and Jesus was the ultimate message sent to us from the triune God. He was sent to men to be the message. Since Jesus is God and because he came to be God's message, then we had better listen to him. And that's the whole point being made in these opening four verses of Hebrews chapter two. That's the reason you and I will be confronted with the question here, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? Our verses here are a warning to not drift away from God's truth. Now, if you were listening Monday on that broadcast, we noted that uh, the first readers of the book of Hebrews had already heard God's word. Now they were told to heed God's word, that they, by paying close attention to it, could then hold on to God's word. That was the goal here. Don't let it drift away. Hold to God's word. In the era in which you and I live, the era of doctrinal confusion and moral confusion, we too need to be holding steadfastly to God's word. It is our truth source when it comes to eternal truth. Get your Bible and join me. Get something to write with and write on as well. I mentioned those gospel tracts here a moment ago. A gospel tract is simply a short written presentation of how to know Jesus Christ as your Savior. Our track that it's in my hand right now is entitled The New Birth. 
the new birth. You've heard the term born again or the new birth. You've heard it a lot. So many people have heard it, but frankly, so many people have have no idea what it means. This gospel track lays out very clearly what the new birth is not and then what it is. You cannot go to heaven unless you have been born again, literally meaning born from above. How do you do that? What is that? What does it mean? What does it not mean? Here is a great, great gospel tool to clarify in your mind, dear believer, what the new birth is, to be able to explain it. But also, if you're listening and you don't know Christ, here is what it takes to know you're on your way to heaven. You must be born again. Please let me send you this track. At the end of my broadcast, my announcer will give you our contact information. You take it, give us your name and mailing address. I'll send you that complete sample packet containing one each of all of our English gospel tracks. Do that today. All right, Hebrews chapter one, beginning at verse one, here's what the Bible says. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip or drift away. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders and with diverse miracles, and the gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. Stop right there. I began using four words, all beginning with the letter W, to form my outline of these four verses. I gave the first two of those words on the last broadcast on Monday. Verse 3 comes and asks that famous question, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? By the way, That phrase, so great salvation, I do believe it refers not merely to what the Bible says about Jesus' cross work to provide salvation. I really believe it refers to the whole panorama of truth about Jesus and from Jesus. Did you hear me? Truth about Jesus and from Jesus. I believe it refers to the whole span about him. It includes his pre-existence about who he was before he was born in Bethlehem. It includes his incarnation. And yes, it takes in his life's ministry, his cross, death, and his resurrection. And it most certainly includes the truth about how God makes saints out of sinners. But oh, my friend, it encompasses what Christ gave to the New Testament writers and those books like Acts and and so on and the epistles there, how to operate in the ministry of the gospel and how to operate our local churches. All of this is part of this phrase here, this word of salvation. I gave two previous words, beginning with the letter W. Go back to Monday's broadcast and hear numbers one and two. I pick up with word number three today. It's the word witnesses. Witnesses based upon the last part of verse three and spilling over into verse four. In these verses, Jesus selected his apostles who would carry on his teaching work after he ascended back to heaven. He gave us people to be our our source, our truth source, these apostles, he gave us people who could we could believe in because they spoke uh, from Christ. Now, why could we believe in them? Well, the verses say the apostles had heard themselves Jesus' teaching. That's what the end of verse 3 says. They had heard Jesus. Jesus had picked these men, trained these men, then had allowed these men to practice ministry while he was still on earth. And then Jesus gave them a fresh commissioning just before he ascended back into heaven. They were to go to tell the world about Jesus's saving message and Jesus's commands on how to live out the Christ life. All of these things are part of the Great Commission. You and I have a trustworthy communication to believe in because, yes, Christ gave it, but he also gave us the follow-up witnesses that fulfilled and brought his word to completion. We have a trustworthy communication. How should we escape if we neglect this great communication from God? Word number three is the word witnesses. Word number four, my fourth and final word beginning with the letter W, is the word wonders. 
It's based upon verse four. Look at verse four. It says this, God bearing them, we're talking about the apostles that heard him, God bearing them witness, both in signs and wonders and in diverse miracles, that means various kinds of miracles, and gifts of the Holy Spirit according to his own will, end quote. Now, there are a lot of folk who want to promote the idea that supernatural signs and wonders ought to be done by God's workers today in our era. If you are one of those, would you please answer the, this question with me? Here's the question. Why did God give all these signs and wonders to the early church apostles? Why did he do that? Now, wait a minute. Before you answer that, I want to remind you of some facts. Fact number one, Moses in the Old Testament, he did a lot of miracles. You remember the Ten Commandments and you remember the Ten Plagues? He did a lot of miracles. Did his miracles turn a lot of unsaved Egyptian people to follow Jehovah? No, it did not. Again, Elijah and Elisha did a whole lot of miracles during the age of the apostasy in Israel and Judah. Did a lot of those people turn to Jehovah and become followers of him? No, they did not. And remember in the book of the Revelation, during the tribulation period, there's going to be all kinds of miraculous signs and wonders. Yet people, rather than repenting of sin and running to Christ, are going to run to hide from the Lamb, we're told in the book of Revelation. I remind you this to make this point. Miracles were not done to evangelize. They were done to authenticate those speaking forth God's word, that they really were from God. Jesus did miracles, but his audience, what did they do? Believe on him? They crucified him. Jesus' miracles authenticated that he was Messiah. The miracles by the apostles authenticated that they spoke from God. Now, Since God's word, his communication to us is complete and has been validated as authentically from God by his apostles with signs and wonders, we no longer need to be validating things by signs and wonders. Their purpose has been achieved. We know we have the word of God. Now, all that's left for us to give heed to is not looking for signs and wonders, but we are to give heed to the word of God not letting it slip away or be exchanged for some, listen to me now, some easier method. That's exactly what the believers were attempting to do that the book of Hebrews was first written to. They're in the first century. They wanted a message that uh, on how to get their best life now rather than listening to Jesus' words. Jesus said this in this world, you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Oh, this world certainly can damage believers. They can kill believers. They can martyr the saints, but it can't destroy us. Our future is secure because Jesus is risen from the dead. You and I need to go out with the gospel, letting the word of God be the word of God and let the word of God be used with the spirit of God. Don't try to wow lost people with signs and wonders. Give them the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And we have a more sure word because it's been validated to us, given first by Christ, validated by the apostles. Let's tell the word. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, You can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.